All right, welcome. Zaslow Show 2.0. It is a Monday, the 27th of March. Good to have you aboard. We, of course, are a Blue Wire podcast. However you're listening to the show, make sure you like, you rate, you comment, you do all that fun stuff. That's for the algorithm. And then that helps me get the monies. I don't know how it works. Don't ask me about that. But I know it's a good thing. And obviously, I appreciate your support. And what a show we have today. I feel like today's one of those days... And especially because it's a Monday, so we always have a lot to recap from the weekend. But I feel like today's one of those days where people can't wait for the show. They, we, we just, we got to get after it. There's so much going on here. So many big deals. So many big stories. And an historic weekend in the history of what we can all now agree is the center of the basketball universe That, of course, is South Florida. South Florida, Mighty Sports, best. Center of the South, center of the sports universe here. A shocking, a shocking weekend, which has resulted in sports fans down here in a place they've never been in before. You have the University of Miami Hurricanes are in the Final Four. And if that's not enough, you have the FAU Owls are in the Final Four. If you would have said before, think about this, before the tournament starts, somebody says to you, the Miami Hurricanes and FAU are going to be in the Final Four. Is that not the dumbest thing you've ever heard? That'd be the dumbest sentence you ever heard anyone utter. Miami Hurricanes and FAU are in the Final Four. I mean... Hashtag blessed. What a weekend. What a weekend. So, usually, I like to start the show and I go over a little bit of, you know, what I did over the weekend. Like, do a little bit of that. And I did some stuff over the weekend. But we got to get right into the action here. There's no time to waste. Now, of course, everything Zaslow Show 2.0, everybody knows, is presented by Anna Jar and Levine, Accident Attorneys. I wouldn't be where I am right now without Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys behind the show from day number one. Behind the show from before day number one. If you've been in an accident, the guys I trust to get you what you deserve. Mark Anajar, Glenn Levine, Ellie Anajar. You get an attorney. First you call 911 if you've been involved in an accident. Then you call an attorney immediately at Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. 800-747-FREE. That's 800 747 3733. You'll get an attorney on the phone immediately instructing you exactly what to do step by step at Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. They will get you the money that you deserve. All right. So, obviously, always a huge thank you to start the week to Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. So, let's start with the Canes, all right? <clears throat> and I, I, I was, I'm of the age, all right, I'm 42 years old, so I'm of the age where I have great mem. like, you guys know I love having Coach Leonard, I love having Leonard Hamilton on my show, even though he's the FSU coach, because I, I got so much respect for Coach Hamilton, I love talking to Leonard, because if you're my age, or certainly older, you, you know where this thing kind of started, you know? We're talking 30 years ago. Coach Leonard, Miami Hurricanes basketball team, Miami Arena. That's right. Hurricanes basketball. Where did they play before Watsko Center? Miami Arena. And when I'm a kid, now you know I love Miami Arena. But when I'm a kid and we're going to those Canes basketball games, first of all, I could still smell. I could still taste the cinnamon almonds, when I walk into that Miami arena for a Miami Hurricanes basketball game, I can still taste the cinnamon almonds. You walk into that Miami arena, and you're there for a Canes basketball game, and there's nobody there. I mean, the band outnumbered the people in the lower level. There's no one there. And the games were fun, but it was like, you know, Constantine Popa, Stevie Edwards, like the Canes basketball games were a lot of fun to go to, but it wasn't something that you did. Nobody used to go to those games. And Coach Leonard really, because there was no UM basketball program to speak of. And then they eventually came back 
And I know, I know for a while they were playing at James L. Knight Center. I don't know what, you know, Tito Horford, I, I don't know what that looked like. I was too young for that. I didn't go to games at James L. Knight Center. I can't even imagine what that looked like. The court was on the stage. It doesn't even, like, it doesn't even make sense to me. So anyway, I used to go to the games, not, not all the time, <coughs> but pl uh, like a lot of games. I used, to, I used to go to a couple games a year at Miami Arena. Nobody's there. Games were fun. Team stunk. Big East. And then eventually, like, you had the one year, the Tim James-led Miami Hurricane team, which got, they were in the top, they may have been in the top five. And I remember that there was one game, UM, who, by the way, UM now in the Final Four, <coughs> excuse me, they're facing Connecticut. There was one game, I believe it was against the Richard Hamilton Connecticut team, where, like, Connecticut was, like, number one. The Canes were, like, number four. It was at Miami Arena. Place was packed. I had to sit in the upper level for that game. Like second or third row upper level. But we were sitting in the upper level for that game. <coughs> so, Kane's basketball started to get going with Coach Leonard. You had a couple tournament appearances. Then Coach Leonard obviously leaves for the Washington Wizards. You can't blame him. Michael Jordan paid him millions of dollars. And then you went through some lean times. You got Perry Clark, who, uh, you know, they love that tournament in Vegas. Perry Clark playing, playing the craps tables, all right? You got Perry Clark. That was a disaster. Then you got Frank Haith for a little bit. And you had some good times. But then eventually, eh, Frank Haith a little bit on the shady side. And then after the run with George Mason, I don't, it wasn't immediately after. It was shortly after. Coach Laranaga, seemingly out of nowhere, the Hurricanes signed Coach Laranega, which I talked about this last week going into the weekend where, yes, we all love Coach Laranega, but it wasn't exactly met with, the way that I remember it, it wasn't exactly met with universal praise. To some, it was kind of a weird, A, a weird hire that they didn't go with someone young because it's going to take a lot of time to build up this program. And from a national perspective, it was, he's going to Miami. Like after what he did in George Mason, this is your one shot. He's an older guy. Going to Miami? A lot of work to be done there. Look at you now. Look at you now. The Hurricanes are in the final four in what is an all-time historic Miami sports season. And Coach Laranega deserves all the credit in the world. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm some huge University of Miami basketball fan. I'm not, although I've been keeping track of the team for most of the year. But this, I mean, that game, the weekend, the whole weekend was phenomenal. I mean, they, they really kicked the shit out of Houston. And then yesterday... Man, so yesterday, we're watching the game. I'm watching with my son, and my younger son got really into it later in the game, too. But when the Canes started to make the comeback, then my younger son, he came and ran over, and he was sitting on the couch with me watching the whole time. But there's like 11 minutes left, and Canes are down, what, 13? 12 minutes left, something like that? And you know when the game turned? I forget which kid it was. Was it Poplar? I, you, know when the, you know when it was like, Okay, these kids still kind of believe that they're in this game. You know the play, right? It was 64-51. Bounces the inbounds on the baseline. Bounces the ball off the back of the defender. Dunks it. Still an 11-point game, 64-53 at this point. <clears throat> but I think, like, that moment right there. Right, these kids still think they're in it. And here's the thing. So, you knew the Canes were in trouble, when they're down by eight at halftime, shooting 64%. That's big trouble. If you're Texas, you're saying, we love where we're at right now. Up eight, allowing 64% field goals. Hey, you keep shooting twos, we'll keep shooting threes, we'll see who wins. Texas is feeling great at halftime. The ball off the back. That was like, that was like the weird turning point in the game. And the Canes, who are one of the best offensive teams in the country, everybody knows this, 
it came down to they, they couldn't get stops. And when they finally were getting stops, that's when they made the run. They cut it to nine. Then they cut it to six, three-point play. Then they get, they get another stop. They cut it to four. They get another stop. They cut it to two. They get another stop. Three-point play, Norchad O'Meara, Canes up one. And it's so, like, they made it up so fast. Now it is on. And it was like, you're looking at the, you're looking at the scores. Holy shit. The Hurricanes are up with four minutes to go in the game. And a chance to, to get to the final four. We were jumping around the room. We were so excited. And here's the thing. I get a little bit of what I deserve here. And this is why I can't get so mad. I was a disaster as a kid watching my teams. The Heat, the Dolphins especially, uh, just a disaster. And my father did not enjoy that. Because my father, while he likes sports certainly and loves supporting the Miami teams, loses zero sleep when it comes to our sports teams. Just no sleep whatsoever is lost because of sports with him. So it's not like, yes, my father took me to the Orange Bowl growing up for Dolphins and Canes games. <coughs> and, you know, I have these memories of going to the Miami Arena for Hurricanes basketball. My father took me to all that stuff. But as far as my, my rabid sports fandom, I did not inherit that from anyone. It didn't come from my father. It came from me. And, and, when I, was, and I, I started to become a bit more self-aware when I was around like 19, 20, 21 years old. And, and I, I was able, I saw that my behavior was really upsetting my father. But I was a disaster as a teenager watching my teams when they're losing. And just throughout the entire game. So I'm watching the whole game now. My younger son jumped in toward the end. But I'm watching the whole game with my older son, Corey. He's 14. And he's a disaster the whole game. <laughs> and I uh, complaining and yelling at the TV. And he's mad. And, and, and he's not even a huge Cage fan either. But he's really into it. And he's really aggravated from the entire game. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? So stupid defense. Why are they giving up open threes? You know, I try to say, look, they, the Canes pack the paint. They're going to they're gonna give up the three. But he's a disaster. And I, I can't... See, I, I'm, I'm more self-aware now. I can't get upset about it because this was me. This was me. And at least my father, he may not have loved it because he wasn't like that. I can't really do anything about it because... I get it. And so when the Canes start making the comeback, when it got to like eight, six points, at that point, we were both off the couch. And we're both written. It is on. We were so into it. It was so intense. I'm remembering those days at Miami Arena. I'm remembering Coach Leonard. I'm remembering Tim James and Constantine Popa and Kevin Norris and, and, and Stevie Edwards and John Salmons and just really shitty Hurricanes basketball teams where nobody went and nobody cared. And even though I'm, I'm not this huge, because I care so much more about pro sports than I do collegiate sports. So while I don't live and die with the Hurricanes football or basketball, I was so happy. I was so proud because I remember, I remember going to those games at Miami Arena as a little boy and being really into it. And I'll tell you, I have a couple friends too. I, I had three groomsmen at my wedding. Two of them, uh, and I'm still close to all three of them. Two of them are enormous Canes fans and care just as much about Canes basketball as they do football, and have always, like, it's not just this year, they've always cared just as much about Canes basketball as Canes football. Like, real Hurricanes fans. And, and it's hard to come across fans like that here because the University of Miami has always been treated, well, I should, I, I should say the Miami Hurricanes because here's the distinction, not the University of Miami. The Miami Hurricanes 
have all, Zazla, what's the difference? I'm about to tell you. The Miami Hurricanes have always been treated like a professional team down here. And what that means is <clears throat> you have fans who they care about the Miami Hurricanes football team, but they don't give a shit about the Miami Hurricanes basketball team because they're a Miami Hurricanes football fan, as if it's a professional team, meaning they're a Miami Hurricanes football fan, not a University of Miami fan. There's a major difference between the two. A Miami Hurricane football fan treats the team like a professional team, goes to the games when they're winning, only goes to the games when they're winning. A University of Miami fan supports all the athletic programs, supports everything about the school, and is in win or lose. And those are two very different things. The Miami Hurricane football fan is a different thing than, the uni than a University of Miami fan. And that's because, hey, it's a small school in Coral Gables, small private school in Coral Gables, where the football team has always been treated like a professional sports team. So you have a lot of the fans who care about Miami Hurricanes football, but don't necessarily care about University of Miami. <clears throat> so two of my friends, two, two, of my, two of my great friends are huge University of Miami fans. Not Miami Hurricane fans, they're University of Miami fans. So they've always loved Miami Hoops. And I... I mean, I was super happy for, for the Canes, for Larry Nega, for those kids. I'm happy because I'm a fan, and I was a fan when I was a kid. But I was really happy for my two friends. Like, really, really happy. And that's, that's just an extension. I'm saying this because I know there's a lot of people listening to the show right now. That's an extension of all you guys who are University of Miami fans. Not Miami Hurricanes fans. University of Miami fans. Because I just told you the distinction. I'm so happy for you guys. First time ever. Final Four. It's. This is a forever season now. You know remember how. The Hurricanes game. They kicked the shit out of Notre Dame. What was it five years ago? Four years ago. That was a forever game. A forever game is when you're going to. Come on. You remember forever. This is now a forever season, no matter what happens the rest of the way. Final four is forever. It's forever. And the Hurricane fan now has a forever season. Really happy for you guys who are really into it. Happy for everybody who's involved. And here's the crazy thing, okay? Okay. It was so exciting yesterday, and it felt like they won the national title. That's, what it, that's how big a deal it is to get to the Final Four. You know, in the NBA, when your team makes it to the NBA Finals, you don't feel like you won the championship. You feel like, all right, now we got a chance to play for the championship. And while that's exactly the same thing that's happening right now with UM, making the Final Four, that has a certain distinction to it. You're in the Final Four. That's forever making the Final Four. And it felt like they won the national title yesterday, but the fact of the matter is, they got to win two more. So they got to win two more games. Still got to win two more games. But that's either here or there right now. So UConn this weekend. <coughs> and Canes have as good a shot as anyone to win the whole thing. As good a shot as anyone. Basketball school, man. Basketball school. Incredible. And if the Canes go on to win the Final Four, if they go on and win the National Championship. By the way, what, what a night coming up on Saturday night. I mean, we talked about this on, uh, you know, my wrestling podcast, It's Still Real to Me. It dropped yesterday, every week, me and my pal Joey. Make sure you go back and listen if you want to catch up on all the big stories this past week in the world of press pro wrestling. We're on the road to WrestleMania. What a way to start the week. WrestleMania. Is th this is WrestleMania week. We got WrestleMania this weekend. And my man Joey asked me, because we, we recorded the show Sunday morning, 
What's going to happen if the Canes make the Final Four? <coughs> because here's the thing. Saturday night, we got the Final Four. It's night one of WrestleMania. Well, here's what winds up happening. So, so the FAU game, we'll get to FAU, don't worry. The FAU game is at 6.09, and the Canes game is at 8.49. WrestleMania, I think, starts at 7. It'll be over by like 10.30-ish, you know, 11. So, look, Final Four, including the Canes game, is getting small TV. That's just the way it is. Because small TV gets muted, we can watch the Canes on mute. You can still understand what's going on. Can't have WrestleMania on mute completely takes away from the event. So the Canes will be on mute. It'll be on the small TV. <coughs> Excuse me. But we're going to be super dialed into the small TV while WrestleMania is on the big TV. And I mean, look, if we get to a place where the game is close in the end, yeah, we're going to have to do a little flip-flop. We will have to do that. Because if the Canes game is at 849, let's say everything starts on time. Yeah, you know, WrestleMania will be over. WrestleMania night one should be over about midway through the second half of the Canes game. So that, that, that will actually work out well. That could work out well. If the Canes were to win the whole thing, and they totally can. Unbelievable thing to say, right? If the Canes were to win the whole thing, it will be the greatest single season story in the history of Miami sports. Yep. So I said. The greatest single season story. In the history of Miami sports. The only thing that it would rival. Would be the 03 Marlins. Because it was so. It was so out of nowhere. So unexpected. It, it was such an incredible dominant run. By the way. 03 Marlins. The Miami Hurricanes hoops. Winning the national championship would be the all-time greatest single-season story in the history of Miami sports. So I said, unbelievable. What a weekend. What a weekend. So then, that brings us to FAU. FAU Saturday night. Now, we were really into the game not the way we were UM, but I, I really wanted FAU to win too. And FAU finds themselves down by what, five? With like six or seven minutes left. And it felt like it was starting to get away from them. And then you blink, and now they're up by five. And this shit is on Kansas State. Kansas State's really good, right? And the thing that, that's so incredible about FAU, I mean, the free throws, the kid... I forget his name, but making four in a row there toward the end. Put them up by four, then put them up by three. Then, then Kansas State doesn't get a shot off. The, the kid panicked. The, uh, what's his name? Noel Marquis Noel. He kind of panics, gives it to the other kid who's double teamed. They don't get a shot off. And that's the thing. And I talked about this with the voice of FAU men's basketball, Ken Levicka. And we talked about this going into the games at Madison Square Garden. Is this FAU team... How are they going to handle this? It's Madison Square Garden. Sweet 16. Because that's what we spoke to. It was right before Sweet 16. And he said that this team's not going to be shook. They're not, and you know what? Talk about a team taking on the personality of their head coach. That's this FAU team. Just, just cool as can be. Cool as can be. And... That was, to me, the most impressive thing about this entire FAU run so far. This team, super cool in every situation. Never, ever rattled. Never looked rattled. Amazing, by the way, that they hit a, they hit a, a, a layup, a game-winning layup, the first game against Memphis, and now they're in the Final Four. The Hurricanes down, what, seven to Drake with about six minutes left? And now they're in the final four. Amazing what both schools had to overcome and how both schools were tested 
right from the get. You got to be tested early in the tournament. You have to be tested. Both teams tested very early on in the tournament. Look at you now. And so FAU, the most impressive thing to me, just the, the balls on those kids. They were never, you can't be scarred. They were never, ever scarred. Madison Square Garden to go to the final four. Let me give you the final call here. After they make both free throws, uh, they, you know they, they don't get uh, they don't get a final shot off there. Kansas State. Let me take you back here. Here's Ken Lavica, FAU men's basketball, calling the regional championship closing seconds courtside Madison Square Garden. For a session for a second, got as well. Kansas State doesn't have any timeouts. The inbound from Sills. Here comes Noel up the near side, left front court. Three seconds now, two. Noel throws it to Masood. High right. It's stripped away by Davis. He stole it. Floored it, let it. Floored it, let it. It's going to the final four. One of the most improbable stories in college basketball history has just played out in New York City. Houston, you have a problem. Florida Atlantic is coming to town looking for a trophy. Incredible. Great call again. Ken Lavica in a starring role there. Voice of FAU men's basketball. Houston, you have a problem. Terrific final call. I mean, a nothing program. A nothing program. He's been doing that for 16 years. And he has the, the final four clinching call. The regional championship clinching call in Madison Square Garden. I, I'm, I'm so impressed both schools, the center of the basketball universe, South Florida sports, unbelievable, unbelievable. Zazla, why don't you play the UM call? I, I would like to, but I feel like you know my my old employer. They may get upset about that. I don't have the rights to it, you know. So uh, otherwise, I would love to give you the final call. Zazla, you don't like Zagaki? You no, know, I actually, I, th I think Zagaki's great. I would love to play his final call, but I, I feel like they probably wouldn't love that. So I give you the FAU final call there. Terrific job there by Ken Levicka. What Final four, look, let's be honest. And as crazy an FAU Miami National Championship would be, holy shit. Holy shit. Monday night, week from tonight, FAU, Miami. I mean, the world will, will spin off its axis. This final four, FAU, San Diego State. Miami, Connecticut, it's a disaster for the network. A disaster. Terrible, terrible. This is what we talk about where you don't want all the blue bloods knocked out. You don't want all the lower seats, a Cinderella. You don't want everyone to be upset because then you get this Final Four. Now, we love it. I'm thrilled with this Final Four. I love this Final Four. Most of the country hates it. That's what you wind up getting. Most of the country hates it. FAU, San Diego State, UConn, Miami. Craziest Final Four. Craziest. Wow. All right, everybody settle down. Hey, if you got a water leak and you can't find where it's coming from in your home or your business, I'm going to help you take care of that. I'm sending you to Water Cleanup of Florida. Text or call Water Cleanup of Florida, one of our newest sponsors here on Zaslow Show 2.0. Water Cleanup of Florida, 954-900-8635. Over 60 years of combined experience. Their team is going to handle all type of leak detection issues. 24 hours a day, 365 after the leak has been located and repaired. Water Cleanup of Florida, they're, they're going to clean, dry, and fully restore the damaged areas. Fully licensed, insured, certified to provide the one-stop shopping that busy homeowners and business owners require. See, that's the thing for me. I don't want to have to go to a bunch of different places to take care of the job. Water Cleanup of Florida, they're going to do all of it from start to to finish. No need to bring in other contractors. They're handling everything. Serving the entire Tri-County area, Miami, Broward, and Palm Beach. Call or text Water Cleanup of Florida. If you think you may have a leak, let's find out. 
24-7, 365, call or text Water Cleanup of Florida at 954-900-8635 or go to WCUFL.com. Water Cleanup of Florida, we clean up your schmutz. Whew. Wow. Final four. It's so, it's something we've never experienced it. How often does that happen? That in sports, and if you're someone who's my age, I've been living a little while. I mean, you know, my son, my older son who's 14, there's a lot of things he's never seen. He's never seen the Dolphins make a run. He's never seen the Marlins make a run. He's never seen the Panthers make a run. He's never seen the Canes. I've seen all of it, except Canes hoops. Except a team that I support in the Final Four. I've never seen it in my life. Last year was the first time a team that I support was in just the regional championship. Now, Zaslow, what are you talking about? Florida Gators, they've won the national championship a couple times. Yes, but that's different. It's different because I went to school there, so obviously I'm invested in the University of Florida hoops. But I've been following Miami Hurricanes since I'm a kid. I grew up here in Miami. So we're talking about Miami. I've never experienced Hurricanes basketball make a run. And yes, you have to point out, Gators, come on, a couple national championships, I went to school there. But that's, that's a fandom that A, I inherited because I went there, and B, that's a fandom that's born out of being an alum. That's why I said the difference between being a Miami Hurricane fan and a University of Miami fan. And so I grew up as a, I grew up a Miami Hurricane fan. I'm not a University of Miami fan. I don't root for all of the sports teams. I grew up a Miami Hurricane football fan because it's treated like a professional team down here. Now, I also obviously supported Miami Hurricane basketball growing up. I just told you all the stories of going to Miami Arena and Coach Leonard and smell and, and eating cinnamon almonds. Oh, so good. But the only thing down here in Miami sports that I've never, ever experienced is my team, who I grew up watching, going to the Final Four. And so now we got it. That's really rare if you're my age or older, of course, because it's never happened before. That you can experience something in sports that you've never experienced. And that's probably why you got a lot of Canes fans who are making plans right now to go to Houston. I know my two friends I was talking about right there. They're going. They already made the plans. They're going. Incredible. So cool, man. So cool. Really happy for, for, for everybody, for all the Canes fans, everyone who's part of that program, all the Canes Hoops fans, all the guys. Great support there, by the way, in Missouri. A good contingent of Canes fans there. Just an excellent job out of everybody. You know what I was doing, though, watching the game? Obviously, I was super into it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fired up. I got a drink in my hand. What kind of drink did I have in my hand? You know I was rocking that six-pack of Johnny Cuba. That's right. I run out of a six-pack of Johnny Cuba. I go, you know, I say, Zazzle, where can I pick up this Johnny Cuba? You keep telling me it's so delicious. Well, it's so delicious that it's the official beer of Zazlo Show 2.0. European roots with a Caribbean soul, a refreshing German lager in a can. Pick up a six-pack right now. I, I, I finished mine over the weekend. I got to go back out. You can get it at Sedano's, Presidente, Winn-Dixie, Fresco y Mas. You always got to drink responsibly, but there's a reason why Johnny Cuba is the official beer of Zaslow Show 2.0. My man Juan, he's got something cooking over there at Johnny Cuba. And obviously, I've been telling you about the beer for a while now. Official beer of Zaslow Show 2.0. That's how I was enjoying the Canes game yesterday. Go try it for yourself. You don't have to believe me. Like I said, Sedano's, Presidente, Winn-Dixie. Go pick up a six-pack of Johnny Cuba. You'll thank me later. And, of course, don't forget Johnny Cuba's mantra. Stay tranquilo. So, got a bunch of NBA stuff we got to get to. The Heat, terrible. Terrible this weekend. And, of course, we got NBA stuff we're going to get to, courtesy of Brunt Insurance. They always bring us our, our Monday NBA rundown. But first, so I usually like to start the show with what I did over the weekend. What, we're a movie family, the Zaslos. We go to all the big movies. That's why I tell you if it's a big movie or not a big movie. I want to let you guys in the, in the inner circle. 
So my son and I, my older son and I, we went and saw John Wick Chapter 4. No spoilers here. You don't have to worry about that. This movie was awesome. It's... I, I, I think it's probably the greatest action series of all time. I think I could say that. Because otherwise... I would say the Bourne movies love the Bourne movies. And plot-wise, the Bourne movies are better movies. But as far as the action goes, I don't think anything touches John Wick. The action is incredible. And how often is a fourth installment in a series? And it's really the same story from the very first movie. It's just That's why, that's why it's chapter four. It's really the same story. How often do you get to a fourth movie and Rotten Tomatoes, 96% certified fresh. And you know what? Yeah, it deserved that rating. And it, the movie's long, but it's, it's nonstop action. No spoilers. I will say two things. Two sequences. The action, unbelievable. The scene where they're fighting in the traffic around that circle. I'm sure it's a very famous uh, uh, part of the street out there in, in New York City, I guess, right? Oh, no, they were in New York City. I'm sorry. They were in... Yeah, they. Uh, I guess they were in Osaka, right? Yes, they were not in New York. I think they were in Osaka. That's probably a very famous square, that, that, that scene there. But the scene where they're fighting in the traffic, incredible. And then the scene where John Wick has to get up the stairs to the church. That whole sequence to get to the final battle, unbelievable. So if you're into the action movies, if you're into John Wick, you gotta see it. I think it's the greatest action. action it's not a trilogy, what's it called if it's four? I don't know, I don't know everything. I think it's the greatest movie action series of all time, John Wick. Really incredible. So can't recommend it enough. You wanna go check that out. Tell you also, another thing I can't recommend enough. I love these new Sheets and Giggles sheets that I have. Can I tell you? I'm going to tell you something real quick about Sheets and Giggles. So Sheets and Giggles, one of the new sponsors on Zaslow Show 2.0. Go to SheetsGiggles.com, SheetsGiggles.com slash Zaslow, and you use my promo code Zaslow at checkout, 20% off your first order from Sheets and Giggles. So when I told my wife, it's a couple weeks ago, when I told my wife, hey, I, I got a new sponsor coming on this show, Sheets and Giggles. And she says, what is that? I go, it's sheets, bedding sheets. You know, it's, it's, it's for bedding. And she didn't like it. I, I could tell she doesn't like it. I go, what's, what's the problem here? I'm telling you, not only is it a new sponsor, you should be very happy about that, but it's bedding sheets. It's, it's, it's going to be great. And she does she, and she looks, she goes, she goes, you're, you're, you're having a sponsor on that's going to continue to endorse your, your degenerate behavior? I go, what are you talking about? She goes, betting sheets. I go, hold on a second. Do you think I'm saying betting or bedding? Meaning she thinks I'm talking about gambling. B-E-T-T-I-N-G, like betting sheets. I, I think she thinks they're like sheets that you fill out your bets on. The betting sheets as opposed to betting sheets like pillowcases comforter uh you know what i'm saying blankets she doesn't like the sponsor because she thinks it's for gambling true story that's not what's going so then i finally explain it's like oh and then my man colin ceo and founder sheets and giggles he's not running some gambling ring He's getting all of us sheets and pillowcases and eucalyptus pillows and eucalyptus mattresses. And you've never slept on softer, cooler, more breathable sheets than what you're getting at Sheets and Giggles. And now the Zaslow family, my kids too, it's on their beds also. We are, we are four of the over 100,000 Americans that are sleeping on Sheets and Giggles. And you're going to want to also. Sheetsgiggles.com slash Zaslow. Use my promo code 20% off your first purchase. Purchase SheetsGiggles.com, one of our newest sponsors here on Zaslow Show 2.0. All right, so we do have some news here. Before I get to the NBA, before I get to before I get to the Heat, who had a terrible weekend, Panthers, also a terrible weekend. So 
we, we got news today. Lamar Jackson sent out a series of tweets earlier today. All right? Here's what I got from Lamar Jackson. Let me give this to you. Hang on. Everybody calm down. All right. So Lamar Jackson <coughs> sent out a series of tweets this morning that read like this. And this is obviously a major, major story. So this is this morning. Here we go. I want to first thank, he goes, a letter to my fans. I want to first thank you all for all the love and support you consistently show towards me. All of you are amazing and I appreciate y'all so much. I want you all to know not to believe everything you read about me. Let me personally answer your questions. In regards to my future plans, as of March 2nd, I requested a trade from the Ravens organization for which the Ravens has not been interested in meeting my value. Any and everyone that's, that has met me, I mean, the, the grammar's rough, so bear with me, or been around me, I love the game of football and my dream is to help a team win the Super Bowl. You all are great, but I had to make a business decision that was best for my family and I. No matter how far I go or where my career takes me, I'll continue to be close to my fans of Baltimore Flock Nation and the entire state of Maryland. You'll see me again. <clears throat> so, obviously, this is a major story. He requested a trade, we're talking, 25 days ago then. And obviously, nothing has happened yet. And we know, at least what we know, no teams have tried to sign him to an offer sheet. And I actually tweeted about this over the weekend. I don't know, I guess I was compelled to talk about it a little bit. I think it was on Saturday. And so I was, oh, the reason I was compelled to talk about it was because former NFL player Aaron Maben, I don't know who Aaron Maben is, but... Aaron Maben was, he, he, you know, had some thoughts to his sports nation about what's going on with Lamar Jackson. And he, he said here, it's frustrating as a former player to watch him being put into this position of being a pawn for billionaires. The fact that no franchise has extended Lamar an offer sheet given his credentials and revolutionary talent reeks of collusion and is indicative of the racism that is deeply embedded in the culture of the NFL. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that there is not racism deeply embedded in the culture of the NFL. That's obviously true. Don't be, don't be naive. That's obviously true. But this is not one of those cases. This has nothing to do with race. <coughs> And, and, and I'll essentially read you over what I tweeted out, my, my thoughts on this weekend. Lamar Jackson was offered, and he confirmed this, was offered the second most guaranteed money in the history of the NFL. The most guaranteed money in the history of the NFL is a total outlier and is not real. It's a bad business decision is what that was. When you're offered the next most guaranteed money in the history of the NFL, I don't want to hear about racism. I also don't want to hear about racism when the contract that I'm calling an outlier and calling a bad business decision was given to a black guy, to a black quarterback, to Sean Watson. When you're offered the second most money in the history of the NFL, I can't hear claims of racism. It, it doesn't compete with me. Now, on a simple, before we, before we look at the bad business part of what the Cleveland Browns did, considering what Lamar Jackson wants, he wants like $50 million a year. Considering what Lamar Jackson wants, isn't it more likely teams have not offered him a deal because they don't have the cap space? Now, I, I'm not some kind of cap expert, although <coughs> I did look at the cap space that teams have available to them, and only like only two or three or four have significant cap space. And when I mean significant cap space, it ain't $50 million. Now, I know there's a bunch of funny numbers and fuzzy math that these teams can do with the NFL. I get it. But isn't it possible that these other teams haven't offered him this monster deal because they don't have the cap space? And then here's also the thing. If they do offer him this deal, 
They're now in a holding pattern with their money tied up waiting for the Baltimore Ravens to inevitably match the deal because they're going to match the deal. See, the Ravens are smart with business. They're not going to bid against themselves. If someone else out there wants to give this, uh, uh, Lamar Jackson what he wants, then the Ravens will say, okay, you were right. You, you are worth that, and we're going to match it. But if you do that, you're now tying up that remainder cap space you have. You can't make any other moves. And the Ravens are eventually going to match it. And then it was all for nothing, and you missed out on other moves you could have made. Now we're talking about basically why teams at the start of free agency didn't do it. I think it has quite a bit to do with, yeah, teams don't have the cap space. He wants an insane amount of money. Now, as far as Lamar Jackson getting what he wants, what he deserves, because he's better than Deshaun Watson. I guess that's debatable if he's better than Deshaun Watson, but let's say he is. I mean, Watson was pretty bad when he returned this year. So let's just all agree, right, that Lamar Jackson is better than Deshaun Watson. That, that's, not a, that's not a leap. Let's all agree he is. Deshaun Watson did not want to play for Cleveland. He crossed them off his list last year. Cleveland then decided, you know what? The only way we're going to get this guy, who has made it clear he doesn't want to play for us, is if we come over the top with a crazy offer, which, yeah, it's going to be bad business, but it's the only way to get this guy. Let's make him an offer he can't refuse. We're going to do bad business, but it's going to work out for us on the football field. It hasn't worked out on the football field, but we're going to do bad business because we think it could help us on the actual football field. And Watson took an offer that he couldn't refuse. So, why does a team make a bad move? And right now it looks like a bad move. Deshaun Watson stunk. Why is it that if a team makes a bad move, makes a bad business decision, now every other team next in line has to also make the bad business decision. What kind of logic is that? If one team does something stupid, precedent set, now every team has to do something stupid. How does that make any kind of sense? How is that logical? And I love making the example, I love bringing it back to the NBA, right? Where, okay, Rudy Gobert was traded to the Timberwolves for what included five unprotected first round picks. Really stupid trade, really bad trade. He wasn't worth it, but the Timberwolves thought he was worth that to them. Okay, so the Timberwolves decided this is worth it for us. Does that mean that every team now along the way has to offer that to a player of Gobert's caliber or better? Like when Kevin Durant became available, originally with the Nets. The Nets were saying, hey, Gobert just went for five first-round picks. Durant is at least twice as good as Gobert. We now want 10 first-round picks. Well, no. That's what Gobert was worth to the Wolves. The Wolves decided we're willing to make a bad deal. We're willing to make a bad business decision. Why does that mean every other team afterward has to also make a bad business decision? It's not logical. Just because the Wolves made a poor decision trading five first-round picks for Gobert doesn't mean that the Suns, when acquiring Kevin Durant, have to give the Nets twice as much because Durant's twice as good as Gobert. No. The Wolves are a badly run franchise. Why does everyone else have to be a badly run franchise? The Browns are a badly run franchise. Why does everyone else now have to be a badly run franchise? And here's the thing. Here's the final thing I'll say about this. Lamar Jackson bet on himself this year instead of signing an extension last year. He bet on himself. 
happens in sports all the time. He bet on himself. I'm not signing that deal because I'm going to get an even bigger one after I ball out this season. Bet on himself. What happened? He didn't have a very good year. And on top of not having a very good year, he got hurt. Couldn't finish the season. If a player bets on themselves, doesn't have a great year, and also confirms the team's fear of his injury history by getting hurt again, how does that equal him getting the richest contract ever? It doesn't. He bet on himself, and he lost that bet. That's literally what happened. It's not racism. There's a lot of racism that goes on in sports. A lot. This ain't one of those cases. It's not one of those cases. And it doesn't look like it's going to end very well for Lamar Jackson. It really doesn't. 